Hey everyone, welcome back to another State of the Call of Duty League video. In this one, we are now only one day away from the first official matches of the Call of Duty League in 2021. So I'm gonna start by giving you my predictions for this weekend. Also gonna talk about some of the player kits that have been released in the last couple days. Wanna touch on all that's happening across league play also. So a packed show for you here today, but to start things off in this one, I wanna make sure that we're talking about opening weekend being hosted by the Atlanta phase. That's right, this starts tomorrow. First matchup is Minnesota versus LA Thieves. I wanna go through, I wanna give you my predictions for each of these. I'm not gonna to be too long-winded, but I do wanna get you guys or let you guys know what I'm thinking for each of these matches. So first one, Minnesota versus LA Thieves. This is massive. To me, there are three or four matches that are just super storyline ridden in this weekend. And this is one of them, I think, for Minnesota. Right now, I have them right around five in my power rankings. This is a chance for them to show that they're for real and they are a contender. And for LA Thieves, I think it's important for that squad to get off on the right foot because if they go 0-2 this weekend, there's not really any saying how they could react to that in the coming weeks. So this is a big one, but when it comes to my prediction... I have to do it. I think this is going to be a 3-2 victory for Minnesota. I just think that at this point in time, with the experience that they have on their squad, mixed with the potential from Attach and Priesta, I'm not sure that they're going to lose this opening matchup. So I got Minnesota 3-2 in the first matchup. Second one, a little bit easier, right? We're looking at this, this one. We got Seattle versus Dallas. I do think that Seattle turns it around a little bit this weekend, and they start to show the promise that they're capable of. But in this one, this is Dallas. I'm going to say a 3-1 here. I think that the control or the search is the map that Seattle could win. But until somebody knocks Dallas off, you're not going to see me take them out of that top spot. I think that they deserve it. I think that they're nasty across the board. Shotzi, Hugh, Illy, Krim. I mean, where are the deficiencies in that squad? It just doesn't exist. So we're sticking with Dallas right there in that second matchup of Thursday. Moving on to Friday, 3 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time, which is 2 Central or 12 Pacific. We got Paris versus Chicago. This is another matchup that is interesting. I do think Chicago is going to win this 3-1. But I'm not sleeping on this Paris squad anymore after the victory they had on kickoff weekend against London. I think this is a squad that obviously is living together. Well, not living together, but they're training out of the same facility. They come together. They watch VODs together. Everybody is all in when it comes to that Paris roster. I could see them maybe even by the first major being in that six, seven, eight range where I think most people would have them towards the bottom of the league right now. But I think as it moves on, this is a squad that could surprise some people. The second matchup, 4.30 p.m. on Friday, Atlanta versus LAG. LAG is one of those squads where I'm not quite sure what you're going to get out of them. I'm not even real sure if they're going to keep their roster because they have Chino on the bench, they have Mensal on the bench, they have Exceed on the bench, they have so many players and big names on their bench. We'll see if Silly and those guys can have a little bit of a revivance based off of what they did last year for Minnesota. But I'm going to go with a hot 3-0 here. I think Minnesota is going to come out angry. I think that they're going to try to get revenge from that loss that they had on kickoff weekend against Florida. I got 3-0 here for Atlanta, which brings me to the first matchup on Saturday, 3 p.m. Eastern time. In this one, we got Paris versus LAG. And I know we just talked about both of these squads, but this is a big matchup for me. We talked a little bit about storylines. This is one where Paris or LAG, which of these two squads are going to end up taking that next step, are going to be end up proving that, okay, this is a team that might be middle of the pack rather than bottom three or bottom two, somewhere in there. I think whoever ends up winning this matchup gets into that middle of the pack talk, right? There's a lot of talk. LA Thieves is there, New York Subliners. There's some squads that Toronto Ultra right in the middle of the pack. Which one of these teams will end up joining them? I think it's going to be Paris 
in a 3-2 fashion. I just, for whatever reason, I really enjoyed watching what they did that opening weekend. And I know LAG also got a victory, but I was just impressed with Paris. I was impressed with Scraps when he was on Hex podcast yesterday. I just... I'm I'm buying in with what Paris is selling right now. We'll see if it ends up turning out. But moving on to the next match, 4.30 p.m., we've got Florida versus Toronto, and this is another one of those matches. Right now, I think Florida is teetering on the edge of becoming a top two, a top three squad. I definitely think that they're top four. I have them four right now in my power rankings. But if they come out this weekend and they show out and they beat easily a team like Toronto – you have to start talking about, are these guys for real? Because we know Skies is an absolute monster, and Neptune played really well in that matchup against Atlanta. Skies is always going to put on a show. It's just what he does. He is like the most consistent player in the CDL. So in this one, I'm really looking for things out of Florida. Toronto, basically a lot of the same roster that they had last year. Bance played phenomenal in their first matchup, even though they didn't get that victory over Minnesota, but Bance played really well. I wanna see a little bit more from Cami and Kleenex, especially in Search and Destroy, which is Toronto is known for being so good at, but I just think with the respawns, it's gonna be too much to overcome. I got a 3-1 here via the Florida Mutineers. Moving on, last match of the day. This is another one that has a ton of storyline. 6 p.m. Saturday night, LA Thieves versus New York. I will say in this matchup, LA has to win this matchup. If they don't win this matchup, that is just one of those squads where you don't really know what's going to happen with team chemistry. How's the morale going to be? Are there going to be people already talking about, does this team need a change? Do we bring in Draza, who's on the bench, who played really well last year? I mean, all of those questions are going to be flying all over the place if LA Thieves doesn't figure it out and at least get one victory this weekend. And they're going against a team that they should probably beat in the New York subliner. So New York, we all know that Zuma just went down with his hand injury and he retired I wish that he was playing because I think that this result would have been different, but there just hasn't been a ton of time for this squad to gel. We know that Hydra is not over here yet due to visa issues and Diamond Con is having to step up and their roster just, I think what they have in Clayster and Mac are two extremely good pieces, but they're playing with the fill-in and Diamond Con, they're playing with another fill-in with a seam, even though they've been playing with a seam all year. I'm just not sure I have the confidence so soon that they could overcome and win their only matchup this weekend. So I'm going to go 3-2 on this one in favor of LA Thieves. We'll see what happens. I think, again, this is a really big match. I think LA Thieves is the team that has to get a win this weekend. And the second team that has to get a win this weekend, it's very important for them. Moving on to Valentine's Day Sunday is the Seattle surge. So when we're looking at Seattle versus London, London's just another team I don't have a ton of confidence in. I think Shawnee's a great player, but, and Parasite will be there. So you know all eyes are gonna be on. Everybody's gonna be watching this London squad. But Dylan, he just didn't have a phenomenal year last year like everybody expected. Alex, kind of the same thing. Those are two names that have a ton of potential but just didn't show it last year. So I think Shawnee and Parasite, I cannot wait to see what happens with those two. But when you're talking about the talent on the other side, when you have Octane, when you have Gunless, those two have to lead the, lead the way. They have to be the two that stand out, lead the way and just put up big numbers for Seattle. I'm interested to see what happens with Looney since we didn't get to see him play last year, but in scrims, he's been playing pretty well. And Pristini has also been frying. You cannot overlook him. I know last year probably wasn't the best year for Pristini, but this is a big matchup for Seattle. I think they're another squad that has to get a victory in the same regards that LA Thieves do, and I think they're gonna make it happen in this one. I got 3-2 Seattle in this first matchup on Valentine's Day, which brings me to the two juiciest storylines that we have, Minnesota versus Dallas and Chicago versus Atlanta. These four teams here, I think pretty much everybody could say that these are four of the top five. I think Florida would also be in there, but these are some just monumental matchups. When it comes to Minnesota 
versus Dallas. I do think Dallas is going to win this one, but I don't think it's going to be by a ton. I'm going to go with a 3-1 count here for Dallas. And the reason why is even though Minnesota was able to gain that victory over Toronto on kickoff weekend, they weren't able to win any hard point maps. And I think against the team that's as talented as Dallas, if you're not where you need to be in hard point, they are going to make you pay for it. So those are two maps already. I just don't see going Minnesota's way. The way Minnesota was able to beat Toronto is they were able to win the control in both search and destroys. I don't think that they're going to win both of those maps. So if they win the control, I don't think that they'll win the search and vice versa. I just don't see them winning back-to-back -back maps and going up 2-1 against Dallas. So when it gets to that final hard point, I think that's where Dallas seals the deal to earn the 3-1. And I've said this multiple times, I am not going to go against Dallas until somebody knocks them off. They deserve that number one ranking. They were phenomenal all of last year. Champs weekend, they were fantastic. They've looked pretty good in scrims. So until somebody knocks them off, I'm keeping Dallas there. And then last but not least, the biggest potential storyline of the weekend is Chicago versus Atlanta. And first of all, when it comes to Chicago, there is nobody that plays better in the limelight when the bright lights are on than Scump and Formal. They have this thing about them that when it's go time, they step up. They are fantastic in the clutch and under pressure. And that's the basis for me picking Chicago here. The other side of that coin is that when it comes to Atlanta, they looked okay against against Florida on that kickoff weekend. But the biggest thing is nobody played bad, right? Had they barely lost to Florida and they had a couple people that dropped a 0.7 and it just didn't look like they showed up that day, that's a different story. But everybody looked pretty good on that kickoff weekend and they still ended up losing because they just couldn't go to bat against what Skies and Neptune were bringing to the table. And... Chicago is just one of those teams that no matter what the title is, they are notorious for starting super hot. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to go a 3-1 victory here for Chicago. Now, if Atlanta comes out and wins, I will not be surprised in the slightest. I think this could go either way. But due to all the reasons we mentioned, I've got Chicago 3-1, which couple other things I want to talk about. First of all, we did see a few other kits from some of the more popular teams be announced in the last day or two. This is from LA Thieves, and it's okay. It's a little bit underwhelming. So this is their hoodie. Literally just has some text on it. Kind of the same with their jerseys. It has a red band, and then there's kind of this different fabric in the middle, but there's no design or anything. I mean, to me, is just a little underwhelming, if I'm being completely honest. Chicago also came out with theirs, and guys, I kind of think the same. To me, I mean, their jersey has Optic Chicago in the middle, and it's got a couple lines, and it has their logo, but when you compare this to the likes of like what Minnesota did with their player kit, I don't know. I mean, they have a black hoodie with their logo right in the middle, and it's small. I just, I don't know. I'm just somebody that expect more from the jerseys out of optic. And this just, I know there's only so much that they can do, but this doesn't really do it for me. Here's the one from Atlanta. And at least you can't really tell based off of this picture, but at least they have some sort of design here underneath where it says Atlanta phase. So at least it's a little bit different, but still, I love the fact, I will say, I like the fact that this year, at least the jerseys are different from each other. It seemed like last year, everybody had the same exact jersey with just different colors and, and the names were different. So at least in this one, we do have some variation based off of what the jerseys look like, but I don't think any are super important. And the last thing that I want to point out, because it's been huge news over the last couple days, is that there are a ton of new restrictions inside of league play. So Treyarch was really up against it. They took a ton of heat. Vaughn took a ton of heat on Twitter from releasing league play. And then you had one way smokes and you had a bunch of attachments that just broke the mode. And we could talk about where people were placed with playing really well and still being placed really low. I mean, it was kind of a dumpster dumpster fire that first day or two, but it is a little bit encouraging seeing the fact that 
league play was only out for a day and they already came out and they made all of these restrictions live. So suppressors and different barrels and different flashlights. And then you have like the war machine, the jammer, Molotov, different perks with gung ho and ghost. So I like what they're doing. I think that it means a lot to league play moving forward. I wish that it was a thousand percent off the rip so that when it released, everybody was happy with it. That isn't really what we got, but at least they're willing to come out, say they made a mistake, make some changes, and then go from there. So this is one of those videos down in the comments below. Let me know what you think about the state of the Call of Duty League. Do you agree with my predictions? What do you think about the player kits? Have you been playing league play? I want to know your comments down below, so make sure you leave them below. If you're new around here, make sure you hit that subscribe button, leave a like. And with that, we'll see you guys in tomorrow's upload.